is a journey. You make mistakes, you learn, you achieve goals, you fall down. Sometimes you get back up, sometimes you learn how to live on the ground itself. And every now and then there is an epiphany, some small new health wisdom that works so profoundly well for you that you think, how did I ever live not knowing this? I had such a breakthrough last summer with water. Now, water is something I never care to know more about at all. I thought it's like oxygen. It's just essential for my body. Then a doctor gave me this very interesting insight. He said that fat cells are discarded from our body as breath, sweat, and urine. In fact, the first step of burning fat called hydrolysis also needs water molecules just to break down that stored fat. So water is essential for weight loss, and you often need to drink more water when you're trying to lose weight. I heard this and I tried it out, and it worked so well for me that even today when I think back, I wonder to myself, how did I ever live not knowing this? This is Sonali Acharji, and you are listening to Health Wealth, a podcast that wants to help you find enthusiasm, appreciation, and factual understanding about your well-being. Summer is ironically the season when I end up drinking the least amount of water. But I do drink things, you know. I have a lot of milkshakes, smoothies, juice, diet sodas, iced tea, cold coffee, and of course, cocktails. A nice cold gin and tonic on a hot summer afternoon with a really good book is something I look forward to from the minute spring comes to an end. But consuming so much liquid often means I don't feel that thirst for water. And there is research done to show that the neurons in your brain, which trigger the feeling of thirst, can consider milkshake, because that does have some water in it, as water itself. So you are technically drinking water, but not enough of it. And with cold coffee or with alcohol, you're also consuming a substance that actively removes water from your body. But it isn't just liquids that are suppressing my thirst. A 2015 study in the journal Physiology and Behavior found that people with normal BMI who consume diets which are very high in sugar and saturated fat, they feel less thirsty after a salty snack and they experience a smaller change in thirst after drinking water than those who consume diets which are lower in sugar and fat. So that Oreo cookie milkshake, which is crowned with Belgian chocolate ice cream, might be very good for Instagram or for fun night in, but it is killing your instinct to feel thirsty for water. After I came to know what my diet does to my capacity to feel thirsty, I realized unless you actively make that choice to drink the right amount of water for the season and for your lifestyle, chances are your body isn't going to be able to remind you of it. So how do we do this? How do we make the right choices for hydration? And can this be done without having to rely on those little annoying beep alarms from water reminder apps? To help guide us through the heat wave that's already started in North India at least, I have with me today Nupur Patil. She is a nutritionist, a fitness coach, and an extremely popular health influencer. Hi, Nupur. Hi, Sonali. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for coming today. You're welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak today. Yeah. It's an honor. You have almost 200,000 followers on Instagram. And I just wanted to ask very quickly, is it difficult to give digital nutrition advice? Because the internet is just bursting with you know stuff to eat and drink and do. But you seem to have really stood out. Was that difficult to do? It's not difficult as long as you're passionate about it. That's what I mm -hmm. found out because knowledge is available to everyone, right? You don't have to now uh, get a degree or be a nutritionist. Mm -hmm. As you said, there is so much knowledge out there. Any person can educate themselves. There are research papers that get published and everyone has access to them. Yeah. So as long as you're passionate about what you do, and as long as you stay true to your 
why, I think it's very easy. So for me, my why started in childhood when I was, I've always been on the heavier side, right? Mm -hmm. So it started with weight because uh, I've been on every diet under the sun. So I visited famous celebrity nutritionist when I didn't have my own degree, of course. And I've been having, like, I've been fighting this battle since I was a child until I educated myself and I tried and tested it on me. So I was my own guinea pig. And then I realized that whatever I've been doing with these unsustainable diets was never going to work because it is unsustainable. Mm -hmm. And that's how I found out that education is very powerful. And then now I aim to educate through social media. Uh, so that is my why, you know, because I so wish that when I was a child, I had someone like me to educate me, uh, to tell me that don't go on that keto diet or don't yeah. eat just salads to lose weight. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's my why. And I'm very passionate about what I do. So no, it's not difficult at all. In, in fact, if you're very original, it's very easy. So people can also relate to you. Yeah, yeah. In fact, um, I think we've all been through that ups and downs till we find one reliable source of information. Um, you posted a small clip on uh, drinking water during fasting. Yes. And that really struck me as something, you know, we, we just don't talk enough about drinking water. And I thought maybe we could start with that. If you could just explain a little bit about why is hydration with water important? So water, our bodies are made of water, right? Mm -hmm. Water is the base of all cognitive, physical, mental functions. Do this experiment. I mean, it's not a healthy one, but why not, right? Yeah. Consciously don't drink water hmm. just for a day and achieve that probably 2% dehydration. You will start seeing you can, you have brain fog. You cannot think straight. You feel tired, you feel groggy and you reach out for things like caffeine or sodas or colas. And immediately next day, consciously drink a lot of water and you see how quickly or how different you feel just by changing this one thing, hydration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. And as you said, this is just about weight loss, but mm -hmm. so important also to metabolize, metabolize the fat. Mm -hmm. right yeah. there are two yeah. things that can metabolize fat is like healthy fat and water so a lot of people have this misconception that oh you should not eat avocados or don't mm. eat ghee it has fat no eat it because these kind of fats will help you cut down the bad cholesterol the bad fat yeah and water of course so so water hydration with water is very important mm -hmm. but then again a lot of people who exercise a lot, for example, athletes, because I am also into sports nutrition and I'm, yeah. I'm an athlete myself. If you are an athlete, if you are putting out those hours on the bike, run, whatever, there's humidity, even if you go in the mornings, right? Even if you stay in a very cold country, you lose electrolytes. So in that case, just hydrating with water might not be enough. Right. So, yeah. So what would you define as healthy hydration for an athlete to get all the electrolytes? Like what would one be taking then? There are two scenarios. Let's discuss a normal person because not a lot of people are athletes. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are a person who has a nine to five, probably you exercise 30 to 40, 30 minutes to an hour every day, anywhere between that. And then you have a desk job. As soon as you... So your initial 10 awake hours. So as soon as you wake up, hour one, two, until the 10th hour that you're awake, you should be consuming a glass, which is approximately 230 to 250 milliliters every single hour. So that one glass, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> one glass every hour, oh which is, if you if yeah. you think about it, it's not a lot. It's not but a we lot, forget. Right? It's not a lot. Mm. It's very much doable. Mm. But we forget. And why we forget is because we're constantly sitting in an air-conditioned air room. 
even if it's so hot outside imagine if there's no air conditioning like i remember when i was a child it was not that common to have air conditioner at home mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we used to constantly have like you know we like me and my cousins used to make popsicles out of nimbu pani or you know we add chia seeds in those popsicles and do something to just cool because mm-hmm. you actually felt hot now you're sitting in your probably i've seen some people who like my clients who are sitting in their office wearing a hoodie because the <laughs> office air conditioning Amazing. is too cold yeah so you know uh, there are some things... your thirst yeah it does it does it does absolutely Can so you tell me a bit about um diet sodas because that's that's my biggest vice you know i'm constantly drinking them not coke but mm. certainly there are these days you know you have these uh, sugar free sparkling waters in the market and they say it's yeah. healthy hydration is that actually yeah. healthy hydration so basically hydration is anything that is a fluid that you consume now what's added into the fluid mm. it can be caffeine like coke has caffeine right caffeine we'll, we'll talk about how caffeine also dehydrates you later on but coke has caffeine some drinks don't have caffeine but don't have sugar mm-hmm. so i would probably you know because life is all about balance i would drink like a diet coke once a week or once once in a blue moon mm-hmm. or if i really like it once a week if that's my normal mm-hmm. because if you impose restriction on anything for example let's do this fun experiment mm-hmm. from today onwards if i tell you because i can see oranges in front of me if i tell you so nadi from tomorrow onwards no oranges you cannot have an orange for the rest of your life the yeah. only thing you will think of having is an orange an orange yeah yeah so if you restrict it only builds up to uh, having that in excess mm-hmm. so if you know how to find the balance yeah i think it's good for you but some people i know people who drink probably three or four cans of diet coke every day yeah. that is not at all healthy yeah of course then they have all sorts of reason that it doesn't have sugar it, it will not spike your blood glucose yes but it has other things mm-hmm. that might probably make you crave more sugar right and but, uh, i but the have strange this thing is some of these diet yes. sodas and i was reading a, a paper recently it pointed that not not diet coke but the other artificial sweeteners can spike yes. your insulin so if you're yes. on intermittent fasting i believe um having diet sodas actually breaks that fast the fat burning cycle that is absolutely true some uh sugars sugar alcohols the sugar mm-hmm. alcohols it can mm-hmm. break your fast and spike even even if it's just a zero calories mm, yeah. but again see a spike can also happen if you do a very long workout of, that's called gluconeogenesis yes you know this this is very interesting of glucose of glucose okay. okay so glucose spikes then insulin comes and then brings it down so as many times insulin has to come and say hello to glucose your fat uh, burning process slows down mm-hmm. so the less amount of so less glucose spikes and less uh, fat percent in the body mm-hmm. directly or indirectly but these sugar alcohols yes although there's zero calories and it might happen in some people but then again it's so bio individual that's mm-hmm. why in my so like social media or posts you always uh, will notice one thing that your nutrition and your lifestyle should be very personalized mm-hmm. not something that you've read on a research based on xyz Yeah and most researches based on exercises or diets have been done on men so for women it's even more difficult to find a correct you know something that fits because we have hormones that go their own separate like you know they have their own separate way yeah. and it all happens in a month they're going up down and we have so many Mm-hmm. whereas for men that does not happen so everything okay. including fat loss and mm-hmm. building muscle is easier for men than women yeah is it um is hydration also gender specific like say for example when i'm on my period um is that the time when i should be consuming perhaps more water 
So hydration is not, but nutrition protein intake is. When you're mm. on your period, your metabolism in general is higher, which means higher body temperature. So yes, you should be consuming more. So indirectly, you need more water, right? But you right. should also make it a conscious choice. Like I said, you should be drinking uh, one glass per mm. hour in the first 10 awake hours of your day, right? But mm. I don't think many of us are doing that unless and until we have a water alarm or I know, consciously. So annoying. <laughs> they keep I know, ringing I all know. the time and I, I put it on silent and then I forget to do it. Exactly. My client told me the exact same thing. Like I have a water alarm. It rings. Yeah. It yeah. reminds me, but I see something more important on my screen and then I just And I back. forget. Yeah. yeah. How, how do you um, sort of advise your clients to remember that? So I have, I did this thing where I was consciously trying to improve my water intake because I was so bad at drinking water. I used to always get some sort of UTI because mm -hmm. of not drinking water when I was a child, because I was really not drinking any water at all. And to add to that, uh, when I used to be in school or college, I have this phobia with dirty washrooms and I used to not pee as well. So this led to the this problem, which then led to led me finding a solution for this. Mm -hmm. So what I've done now is I have kept a bottle of water in every possible corner of my house within <laughs> reaching amazing. distance of yeah. yes. Yeah. So my work desk always yeah. has two bottles. My bedside always has two bottles. Um, when I'm in my car, I always have a lot of bottles in my car. Even if not in the driving seat, in the boot, I have an entire uh, box of water. I know it's going to be hot, but I just cannot afford to be dehydrated anymore. Because when you know the side effects or the bad effects mm -hmm. of being dehydrated, you don't want mm -hmm. to do it to your body. Yeah, yeah. And uh, less sleep and less water are some things that really make a catastrophic change in your body. So... Mm -hmm. I can imagine, I think yeah. That is what I do and it works for me, so. that That's actually not a bad idea. So you're constantly reminded, actually. Um, tell me, um, is it important what container you're placing your water in? Because, you know, some people say place it in copper, some say glass, some say avoid um, reusing plastic bottles. Is that important? Yeah. Anything that is not plastic is okay. Mm -hmm. So copper, as we know, basically also for people who have gray or graying hair mm -hmm. without like, you know, old age is fine. That's a natural process. But I've seen clients in their 30s, 40s having gray hair, gray hair mm -hmm. which is not normal, like a lot of gray hair, yeah. which means the pigment is being removed. So it also indicates a copper deficiency. So having uh, water in a copper vessel is also fine. I do glass. That's the mm -hmm. best. Mm -hmm. but pla anything else but plastic but steel plastic. is good yeah. yeah glass is good I like mud a lot I find uh, mud, it keeps I it naturally mud. cool as well yeah it's a, I love it the flavor as well surprisingly oh yes I love the flavor and when I it reminds yeah. it's like so nostalgic when we used it to is. be uh, kids yeah. and then in the summer season my mom used to put the I don't know what it's called it looks like grass uh -huh. and put it in the mud matka you know to make the water cool and it has yeah. a very nice flavor i don't know what that thing is called maybe mm. i can ask my mom and yeah inform yeah. me later that sounds great um we were talking about dehydration as well and now there are some substances that are all around us and they're dehydrating um a mm -hmm. couple of them is of course coffee and i know alcohol um, yes. How bad are these things, um, especially, you know, considering we're having a heat wave right now? Um, how much should we be avoiding them? Very bad and avoiding at all costs, unless and until you compensate before you drink. Mm. So for alcohol, I have a rule for my clients. Mm -hmm. If you know you're going to drink one drink of whatever, vodka, whiskey, wine, you need to drink two glasses of water before drinking this. So suppose in your awake hours, you need to drink 10 glasses of water. Now you need to drink 12 per drink. If you're drinking two, so you know, it keeps increasing. Yes, you'll have too many trips to the bathroom, mm -hmm. but you can counterbalance the effects. Another 
tip I would say for people who drink in the night time before going mm-hmm. to bed, like, you know, you're at a party or you're at a dinner yeah. and you have consumed a few glasses of alcohol before going to bed, uh, 500 ml of water. And you see the difference, not drinking, like don't drink mm-hmm. water and drink water in the next time. Yeah. And feel the difference, you know. I always believe in teaching yourself by experimenting it on yourself. So I always tell my clients, like, yeah. first, normal, you know how it is when you've not had water. Now drink water and see how you feel the next day. Mm. That tells your body is constantly talking to you. You just need to be aware and awake to listen to it. Yeah. No, I also find it very um, strange how much uh, of weight you put on and I'm, I'm not talking about hard alcohol or just alcohol by itself but um, just a cocktail which is supposedly yes. to have just you know very little bit of alcohol and the rest is juice um, you put on weight like nobody's business within the next 48 hours and yeah. and I wonder then I mean do we really think about how much of sugar we're consuming with it absolutely I so people have this misconception that fruit is healthy Mm. and it is not healthy. Anyone, like I did this very cool experiment with my followers. I wore a CGM, which is basically a device uh, for diabetics to check their uh, blood glucose Mm -hmm. because, you know, pricking every day is not convenient. So this CGM, you can attach it to your, to the back of your arm and it, there's an app there's mm-hmm. a sensor. So mm-hmm. with your phone, when you scan it, it gives you your reading. Of course, there, there are errors involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, but some uh, biohackers in the West, they're using it to monitor other hormones, which is not a very widely uh, accepted use for it. But you can use it for that. Mm-hmm. So I put it on and I had every single fruit. I had bread including multigrain, which is like, you know, people are like, oh, I have brown bread. Oh, I have bread multigrain. is like the worst thing in the world, you know. Every single bread I tried yeah. spiked yeah. my glucose. Every single bread. I believe you. So, I believe you. I'm shocked. I recently have been yeah. buying this bread and it says no maida in it. I turn it around and it says added gluten. And I'm yeah. thinking, what, what, what's the difference? This is worse. This is you're giving me the directly the inflammatory substance without even that little bit of fiber which Maida might be having. One hundred percent. This experiment sounds so cool. Yeah, I also made a homemade bread, but the same result. End of uh, the conclusion is (laughs) don't eat bread. (laughs) God. But moderate. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so when I eat fruit. Every single time, oh my gosh, it spiked my glucose like I'm eating some candy or chocolate cake. So this brings me to my theory of, it's not a theory, it's a proven fact now Mm. with a lot of experiments that calorie counting for weight loss has been a very outdated concept, Mm -hmm. right? If you're restricting your calories and you're making your glucose go up and down 10 times in a day, you will Mm -hmm. never see fat loss. If your cortisol is high and you don't eat anything for days, the high cortisol... So basically, let me tell you a very uh, good experiment that someone did. Mm -hmm. So they found out that cells have memory. And how this cortisol is working now is because our forefathers were farmers, for example, Mm -hmm. let's say. Mm -hmm. And when there is a drought or a famine, they have high, like their cortisol then rises because Mm -hmm. the brain sends a signal that something's wrong Mm -hmm. and the cortisol would rise and it would store fat in their body just for them to sustain that dry weather. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we have stress in relationships with our kids at work, uh, it's we are surrounded by stress right so we are having cortisol spikes just like glucose and it does not let our fat leave the body because it's a defense mechanism Mm -hmm. your Mm body is basically protecting you yeah but the body doesn't know that this stress is not actually a life-threatening stress Mm -hmm. right so and constant 
uh, stress then leads to insulin resistance. Everything is so interrelated. Fine. But we just want to look at calories. Oh, I'm eating 1200 calories. Okay. A, it's not enough. And B, <laughs> it won't work because it's very outdated. It's terrible. You know, I've gone on to these uh, couple of these calorie restricting apps and I've been yeah. shocked. They were giving me 1000 calories and I kept telling her, I work out for 45 minutes, intense exercise a day. How can you yeah. think of giving me 1000 calories? I mean, no. my my entire body will like stop working. I mean, it needs some amount to just uh, survive. And since yes. we're getting in this uh, subject, I just yeah. thought, uh, and you seem to know a lot. I mean, not seem to know, you do know a lot. Um, can you tell us a bit about um, the basal metabolic rate and the basic amount of maintenance calories? Why do people need to have at least that much of energy in their bodies? 110%. So BMR is something that your body needs, come what may. Mm -hmm. you exercise, even if you're sleeping in bed, a patient, a bedridden patient will need those many calories, come what may. And trust me, 1200 is not a good number for any adult. Whether mm -hmm. you're exercising or not, it is just not acceptable. Now, what will happen if you're in a thousand calorie? I don't know how. It's like, even when I'm saying it, it sounds so absurd. It sounds awful. Yeah. It sounds awful. It's like torture, you know? It's like low-key self in self uh, torture inflicting practice and and you know for women it stops your menstruation as well because i've been through that journey as well where you know i've gone severely calorie deficit and i i couldn't uh, menstruate properly for six months after that so it's it's quite dangerous to cut it out in that sense True. even if see as women we are reproduct like we are made to reproduce right mm -hmm. our biologic biology is such that we will reproduce at a certain age or once in our lifetime. That's how we are made genetically, mm -hmm. scientifically, whatever you want to call it. Now, uh, it also has to do with your fat percent. If you go below a certain fat percent, which now some athletes by default, like marathon runners, they can't help it. It's their livelihood. Okay, fine. They do not menstruate at all. At all. Zero. And for People who are obsessed with, you know, low fat percent, they lose their period. And then it comes with a host of other issues which they're unaware of. And then they say, no, I suddenly broke my bone because bone density goes out the window when you're doing mm. these thousand calorie shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Immunity. You will mm -hmm. fall sick so often that you will finally, your immunity will start attacking because it doesn't know now yeah it starts attacking your own whether it's a thyroid or anything and that's how mm -hmm. autoimmune diseases arise mm -hmm. so everything like i said is so interrelated uh if you don't take proper care and if you just uh like there are a lot of people on social media who might say that influencers for example who are working mm -hmm. out in the gym uh, they might say that, oh, I eat this, 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 this is 1200 calories. I don't know how many young girls might believe that. Mm -hmm. You and I know that, okay, it's not true and it's not practical. So probably you'll try it for a day and you'll say, no, not for me. Yeah. <laughs> but young yeah. girls who have peer pressure or who have, you know, who are very headstrong might follow it. And that's the age where actually PCOS begins. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and PCOS is a lifestyle disease uh, yeah. and 99% of PCOS or endometriosis arises from the gut. Yeah. So now it's like you see how we spoke from hydration to calories to all, immunity to gut. Yes, yes. It's, it's all it's, connected. It's, it's so important. yeah, and it's so complex. But again, if you have a personalized approach, what works mm. for you and not what mm. worked for him or her or that actress or that nutritionist, then you'll have success. You need to learn about your own body. That's what I aim at doing. I put on, mm -hmm. put out a lot of information out there so that you don't need to copy anyone else. Use your knowledge and apply it on yourself. And then you learn your body is obviously always talking to you. Yeah. So you learn whether this works for me or this does not. Mm -hmm. intermittent fasting is one such thing 
that I don't know where like keto diet from Bollywood a lot of people started doing keto and intermittent fasting and together. again yeah together Gosh. so wow. I mean like double torture yeah. and women are struggling with hormonal issues now because of that because intermittent fasting also increases your cortisol mm -hmm. so for men probably it works out perfectly if I have a client who's a woman and is asking me to put her on an intermittent fasting diet, I would never take her on as a client because I don't want her. I, I don't want to damage more things than just for like a stupid goal, like fat loss or weight loss, which will eventually not even happen, you know? Yeah, because I think everyone comes to approach this nutrition to lose weight. It's yes. <laughs> that mindset when you shift and you do it for health, it's slower, it's more complicated, but I mean, that's where we should all be going, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, there's so much more to fat. So uh, another thing is like, if you heal your gut, if mm -hmm. you have a very strong metabolism, metabolism can also be fixed, by the way. Mm -hmm. If you take your circadian rhythm or fix your circadian rhythm, Mm -hmm. You don't have to count calories ever in your life, like ever. So this is the new research that has been found, like how gut health helps yeah. in all these things. Also mental health, because the gut and our brain are connected yeah. through the gut brain axis. Yeah. Yeah. And literally, uh, it happened to me the other day. Before, when I was 90 kgs, whenever mm -hmm. I used to have a period, I used to always order like chocolate cake or some sort of pastry. This time, after maybe years, I had this craving. I always have dark chocolate in my fridge, but I ran out and I'm like, you know what? Let me just order a chocolate cake. It's been a while. And I used to finish the entire pastry before. And I used to be, uh, I have my, I deserve this because it's my period, which was very wrong because then again, so much sugar. This time I'm like, fine, let me do it. You know, I ate three bites and I felt so giddy, like something mm. started happening in my system. Mm. Because, you know, all these years of healing, obviously my gut microbiome changed. Mm -hmm. And when I ate this, they probably retaliated that woman, what are you doing? Don't feed yeah. us poison. Yeah. And I felt horrible the entire day. I had so many meetings. I had to cancel because I had brain fog. And then I just started feeling, you know, these thoughts started coming to my mind negative thoughts mm -hmm. uh, probably some guilt so you see what you eat is what you think mm -hmm. and this is a very good example that happened to me in real life and yeah. I've, yeah. I've also heard so many stories from people who are now experts in the field of gut health biohacking mm -hmm. etc so a lot of research also is now av available for people to read and you know gain that knowledge about yes. these things yeah actually um particularly baked goods which are i mean i think it's surrounding us i mean even if you just are scrolling through a google news feed you just come up with all sorts of photos of very nice looking True. cakes and cookies but True. the ingredients that go into them um they're so complicated. Even the ones that are made at home, if you just go to a wholesale um, baking goods supplier and you look at the cream yeah. that they buy, there's no yeah, lactose no, no. in it. There's nothing. Yeah. It's just a whole bunch of hydrogenated fat. And yeah. Yeah. it really makes you wonder that, you know, um, when you're having these things, what you're doing to your body. Yes. You're just creating more and more inflammation. And more yeah. and more inflammation leads to Again, autoimmune disease, diseases, the first thing that it will attack, inflammation will attack is your gut. Mm. Now, your body can endure your torture for a few months, years, depends on every person's, um, like, you know, what they've been through, what the genetic composition is like. Mm. But then one fine day, your body will retaliate. And that day, you will not know from where it came. You will just think that it's very sudden. But it's never sudden. It's never it never happens because of something you did yesterday or last week. It yeah. always happens because something you've did, been doing for a few months, years, decades. Always. I agree. And so, you know, coming back to hydration. Uh, yes. <laughs> we are in summer and it's a particularly hot summer. Mm -hmm. Are there certain things that one can drink for health? 
um, mm-hmm. which is not water for good hydration and for health. Yeah. Yes, which is not water, something that has electrolytes. Mm-hmm. Coconut water, I love. And, you know, having tried coconut water in different parts of the world. And like I said, I like to use my CGM when I'm traveling because it gives me an insight into also because every culture is closely related to food. Mm -hmm. And food is the base of social life of human beings, right? So whenever I'm traveling, I like to wear my CGM. And what I've noticed is coconut water in India versus coconut water in, say, Southeast Asia is much better, has much better glucose control and you won't spike your insulin as compared to, for example, if you have coconut water in Singapore or Thailand or those countries, which is much sweeter and much, obviously, more electrolytes, but much more healthier. And you see how nature has made things and we always want to go against nature. Mm -hmm. Now, coconuts always come with the tender coconut inside yeah. the the fruit the coconut and people are like oh no i just have coconut water but i'll throw because that's fat yeah fat. but but uh when whenever there is a glucose spike uh to control that you can use two things first is fat and second is protein so if you have that coconut water with the malai with the tender coconut no spike And that fat is actually healthy fat. It's not like your saturated fat or trans fat, which is going to cause inflammation. Yeah, Mm -hmm. this is also gut healthy food. Mm -hmm. And so nature has given you something in a packet, but you just want to like, you know, separate and low fat milk. Low fat milk also, by the way, uh, spikes Mm -hmm. your glucose because it does not have fat. Mm -hmm. So some things that nature has given us, we should not some things, Everything that nature has given us is for a reason. Yeah. So I think we need to stop being scientists and dissect the fat out of everything and uh, consume it as it is. What would you say about, um, you know, sherbets and nimbu panis and jaljeeras and am pannas? You know, we're always told that these are hydrating, cooling, and they put extra mishri in it because mishri is supposed to cool your body. Um, Yeah. Is that true? It's not true. Uh, I mean, these foods are cooling, but Mm -hmm. you know, you can use chia seeds for cooling. You don't have to consume so much sugar. Mm -hmm. India has become the diabetes capital of the world, which saddens me. But also because, see, we are a wide population and not a lot of us know how to read labels. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times uh, when we're buying something, we don't really, really read that, okay, how much added sugar does this have? We don't even probably know what is added sugar. And then we bring home this pack of gluten-free, sugar-free thing, but it has yeah. sugar. Yeah. Like just the other day I was uh, walking somewhere and there was a dessert shop and it said sugar-free desserts. So then I went and I asked, uh, what do you add instead of sugar? And they said, honey and dates. And I'm like, guys, come on. It's just, it will spike, right? It's sugar. Or coconut sugar. That's the current favorite. Yeah. In everything. That's the current favorite. Oh, yes, yes. Coconut yeah. sugar. And yeah. okay, why will coconut sugar not spike your insulin? It's the, as long as it spikes your insulin as and it has calories, it is sugar. Mm. So I also aim to educate people. People should actually turn the label and just see how... So it's very simple. Ratio of carbs to proteins to fat versus carbohydrate is either fiber or sugar. So how much sugar in carbohydrate? Carbohydrates can each other. There's always like carbohydrates, XYZ grams, out of which sugars, XYZ grams. Mm -hmm. So you should always check this. Okay, forget about the protein, fat, carbs. I don't want you to get into this. But check this. We are... A diabetes capital of the world? No, please. You know, things need to change. This is not, this is not nice. Yeah. And and outside of um, liquids, you know, given yeah. that we are in this particularly scorching season, are there certain things which you would advise people to eat um, to sort of maintain um, health in the summer? 
Yes, yogurt is a very good option. It's also very gut friendly. And what mm -hmm. I like to make, my favorite hydrating drink is yogurt. And all the hydrating foods are in here. So they are not liquids per se, but these are hydrating foods. So I add okay. yogurt. Mm -hmm. I add cucumber. I add mint leaves. I add chia seeds. And then I add a little bit water and black salt. Uh, yeah, that's it. And maybe I just squeeze a lemon. I mix everything and I make this. Oh, yeah. I also add jeera powder or chaat masala. And I make this spiced buttermilk. Yeah. So it has cucumber. It has yogurt. It has chia seeds. It has mint leaves. It has jeera, black salt. And it is super hydrating. And it is the best thing I like to have in on like a nice summer that afternoon. Sounds amazing. And and what about meals? Um, should one be eating less or more in the summer? So in summer, your body generally temperature is high. So yes, you need less food in summer because you see when it's winter, especially for I don't know if you are in Delhi. Yeah. In Delhi, the winters and summers are very extreme. Mm. Not like mm. in Pune or in Bombay where we practically mm. don't have winter. Yeah. So if you like, again, experiment with yourself over the seasons, eat like, for example, one bowl of rice in summer mm -hmm. and one bowl of rice in winter, the same amount, probably you can add a little bit of ghee in summer, you won't feel hungry for like three, four hours, minimum, maybe five, six in winter, you feel hungrier quick because the temperature outside is cooler and your body burns more calories to maintain the normal temperature as well. Mm -hmm. But because in some, summer it's always already high, the body does not need to spend more calories to maintain the temperature. Mm -hmm. So definitely in summers, your diet needs to be very different. You cannot eat bajra and all those things. That's why, mm -hmm. again, I said science. Why yeah. bajra is only harvested in winters? All these mm -hmm. are, all these millets, winter, are winter foods. Mm. so in summers you can eat rice very good for the gut and just today I had this client who said uh, yeah you know I'm eating everything healthy I eat brown rice a lot and I said brown rice is not healthy eat white rice local yeah. uh, local varieties or just get like uh, basmati white basmati rice best food for your gut easy to digest and uh, so yeah you know there are so many misconceptions yeah. And for summers, you should have more yogurt, mint. Mint is all, always also a, a summer vegetable, you know. Mm -hmm. Cucumbers, lettuce, tomatoes. These are very hydrating and more salads, of course. So what I like to do is my typical summer lunches, I sprout green moong mm -hmm. or uh, I soak some rajma or mm -hmm. uh, chole or chickpeas. And then I, when I sprout these green moons, I make sure I cook them. And then I make a very nice refreshing salad. I add some onions, tomatoes, cucumbers. I put some chaat masala. And uh, this is my, and I add some paneer in there. So this is my absolutely favorite summer lunch because it's so hydrating, filling as well. And uh, it is just a perfectly balanced meal. So it has the right amount of carbs, protein, veggies, and uh, it's so delicious. Yeah. You know, this uh, one thing I always love to ask anyone who's a nutritionist, um, because the world is bursting with self-styled nutritionists as well. What you studied, why is it so important for people to go and trust nutritionists who have actually studied nutrition science? Uh, because, but you know, it's not, it's not always important. There are mm -hmm. some, for example, what I learned in mm -hmm. my degree mm -hmm. and what I learned after with mm -hmm. experienced clients has, mm -hmm. it's like catastrophically different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why you should trust nutritionist, I'll explain. First, mm -hmm. you get a degree, right? You spend that mm -hmm. amount of time. So obviously, if you're spending like three to five years in a degree, or if you, even mm -hmm. if you do a master's, mm -hmm. you know that this person has the passion for it. It She or he or she has the liking for it because you've studied it. So you have an interest. Mm -hmm. And wherever there's an interest, there's a scope of, you know, gaining more knowledge. Mm -hmm. 
because mm-hmm. like a kid some people some kids like barbie dolls and then probably when they grow up they like to become like stylists or something something like that like an extension yeah, yeah. it extends you into that knowledge vast knowledge that is available and what's most important is experience so for example an influencer might just gain the knowledge but doesn't have experience with clients which mm-hmm. counts for most of your uh you know what you are as a nutritionist i think that's the most uh important thing yeah, client definitely. experience because you have tackled uh, issues with clients and worked with them and seen so many different types of people because like i said everything is bio individual and personalized and you've seen so many types of bio individualities and worked with them that itself has a huge uh, it, itself is a knowledge bank yeah and, and that so many emotions is, as well associated with the food and right 100% sometimes i feel i am a counselor and not a nutritionist because trust me yeah. trust yeah. me when i say this yeah i have had some clients everything is going by the book gut health um calories exercise sleep uh, circadian rhythm you know everything but the weight just doesn't go away and then i have to step in and you know probably push my professional boundaries and ask them like is everything okay at home some clients cave some clients take time but because yeah. my relationship with my client only begins on a very friendly note i think mm-hmm. i have that advantage and 99.9% of the times it has something to do with a mother in law issue or a fight mm-hmm. with a husband or a bad colleague at work so you see stress also yeah. holds you back from so everything else is working but see again stress and cortisol has coming into the picture yeah and when you and counsel then, them yeah, yeah then Yeah, please please go ahead when you counsel them. When you counsel them, when yeah. you it's also it also has to see a belief system can be changed. It also has to do with the belief system. A lot of clients might think that oh because now you know when I was younger it was easier to lose weight. When I'm older it's not. But then when you explain them, you when you completely change that belief system, immediately you see results. Mm. So your it has to do so much with the mind as well. And that's what I love about my work because. you know it's like a uh, a game of lego or a puzzle for me which yeah. which which i absolutely love solving so yeah. i love that thing when clients come up to me with a challenge and i can actually give them a solution it was also you know when when we have more people talking from the view of science and from experience and from fact then you start seeing all these societal beliefs towards nutrition change as well right because so much of um what we end up eating when we don't want to eat it also happens at family get togethers or you know you don't want to upset someone and you know or or you're just sort of almost badgered into eating something because you know their family system believes this to be the healthy thing um, that's also very difficult to stand up to actually very difficult and yeah. from my own experience i tell all my clients whenever you go for a social outing or mm. someone's house don't tell them you're on a diet because you're mm. going to eat the things that they have you're eating the same thing every day right you don't need to announce it because and i told them if you announce it trust me they will eat you, make you eat more mm. so then my clients used it and they're like you're right you know everything that was cooked at home because it's a homemade meal or even if you go yeah. out so one of the uh, lifestyle changes that i teach my clients is because our lifestyle now involves going out to a restaurant it's not like before that we are eating most of our meals at home or you know some people are so busy they have mm-hmm. zero time to cook mm-hmm. so i also teach them if you go out you can still maintain your diet you just need to be smart and just need to know what to order and then they're like this is actually life changing because no other plan has taught me this it has only been restriction restriction like don't go out if yeah. you go out have your dinner at home and go which is like for me i would be the odd man out and i don't want that kind of an attention that you know yeah, yeah. Oh, why are you eating or you know something it's, like that it's so super stressful to do that yeah because you need to have a social life just because you want to lose weight or you're on a diet mm. plan or you cannot get rid of your social life because mm. life is all about balance 
Yeah. And if something is making your life disbalanced, it is not meant to be, even if it's a diet. I agree. In fact, nutrition is so important to find balance because otherwise either it's the line between going very, very off track and getting there is so thin. Um, thank you so much for everything you've shared. I think um, I started off talking about hydration, but it's been so interesting listening to you and your experiments. It's fascinating. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you. One of the worst things for me is to be denied water. So this is not just the time of year when I try to ensure that I'm hydrated, I also like to ensure that I can provide water for the nature around me, for the birds who come or for the street dogs and cats. And sometimes even for the strangers who walk into my house and who are out there all day delivering things like food, groceries and slightly stranger things like silicon garlic peelers. The idea of one health for all is so appealing to me and it is during extremes of season or extremes of disease that you realize you don't live in isolation. We need the health of the birds, the animals, and the community around us for our own health and well-being. Does weather impact the kind of food or choices you make about your health? What are your summer care experiences? You can share your thoughts with us on pods at indiatoday.com or you can message us on 8588966996. And if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a rating. We are available on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube.